जय श्री कृष्णा टू ऑल वेलकम टू पाथ टू आनंदम गीता सीरीज फ्रीडम फ्रॉम पेन्स एंड मिजरीज टू हैप्पी हेल्दी एंड पीसफुल लाइफ टू हंड्रेड एंड एट मंत्रास टू अवेकन माई सोल एंड ऑल्सो भगवत गीता माई क्वेश्चन एंड गाड्स आंसर्स pranam to swami hari har ji maharaj with his blessings guidance of shri krishna bhagwan ji we are here together this morning or this evening wherever you are and whatever you see on this page it is all his guidance his adesh i would say his blessings the path to anandam has started founded in 2007 and the purpose of that was to remove all of our causes of miseries and make our self free from worldly barriers road blocks anger fear resentments with simple and easy techniques through bhagavad gita through experiences and getting the help from every one of you so this happiness and self transformation work has been guided by him and all these best sellers on amazon with the cds etc is all his blessings and many people are benefiting from it from different organizations different positions like ceos many conferences etc and as you can see there are now more than 350 videos on youtube and all these programs are posted on youtube channel so please look at under satya kalra and links are there as well and today's session is be beware of your eternal enemies what are the road blocks for us what are our barrier to experience our who we are it is based on gita's verse chapter 337 and then finding out what are my stumbling blocks to reaching to our higher self our true nature satchit ananda what are my worldly selfish desires what and why anger my actions and practice to minimize those and my sankalpa i am alert i am awake i know my shortcomings my limitations and tip of the day meditation with anandam and question and answers so we start with our prayers which was the sankalpa of our very second series in january i am arjuna we have many questions many issues and want to speak to lord krishna supreme power almighty whatever you want to name it that pure conscious energy the supreme energy divine shakti and became the arjuna asked for his advice with humbleness and surrender and give our reins of life in his hands beautiful bhajan अब सौंप दिया इस जीवन का सब भार तुम्हारे हाथों में 
So let's pray to him as a Arjuna. Karpanya dosho pehte swabhava paschami tvam dharma sammur cheta yachya syani nishchitam bruhitan me shishyas deham shadi maam tvam prapanyam shishyas deham shadi maam tvam prapanyam My heart is overpowered by the weakness of pity, hinta. I have lost all my composure and my mind is confused about my duty. Dharma, I am requesting you to tell me, I am requesting you to tell me what is definitely good for me, not what am I asking. What is good for me? I am your disciple. I surrender to you. Please instruct me, guide me, help me. So let's listen to his messages, just like Arjuna did. And he said, Karshe Vachanam Tao. So let's remove our confusions, doubts, Nashto Moha Smrati Labda. So grateful to him with a stable mind, Stito Asmin, with a stable mind, right at the present moment. And let's go through this beautiful, blissful journey for purifying ourselves, transforming ourselves, and uplifting our conscious level to ultimately experience my infinite nature. Sat Chit Ananda. And Lord Krishna, he became the teacher. We are on the chapter three. So we are, he is still, there is a relationship of a student. Arjuna became the student from friend to a student. And Lord Krishna became his teacher and start guiding him. And here Hariharji Maharaj said that Gita is a step by step spiritual instruction manual to operate our lives rightfully. It teaches us how to recognize our limitations. Gita is a mirror. It shows us where the spots are on our face and remove your barriers. Attain eternal happiness. Not kabhi khushi kabhi gum. Eternal happiness peace, anandam, while living in the material world and beyond realizing our true self. And here, starting with his guidance and advice to Arjuna to be a karma yogi because he did not understand what Lord Krishna told him, that you are Atma, don't worry about killing here or incurring any sin because you are the pure Atma. Just perform your prescribed duty. Follow your Dharma and you will be free from all the sins. But Arjuna could not understand that. So Lord Krishna started teaching him the language which he could understand. He was Kshatriya, so that's why he starts asking him to do your duty. But do it as a karma yoga, not just an action, but do the action, everything for me, for the wellness of the society. And that's why it is called yoga, karma yoga. Not just the karma, karma which turns into dharma with skillful skills, with love and compassion for sarva bhuti terata. But then the question comes we all like to do the best of the best. But then certain things stop us. 
what are those these are the five plus two enemies so we should be aware of it so lord krishna tells him step by step removing each layer of his ignorance and take him to the essence of his true nature his infinite nature his true being and through karma yoga what is the purpose of karma yoga and how does it work why karma yoga first action first because that is the foundation to realize who we are we are no different than god but through seva and then seva cannot be done without love and compassion because that's the definition of karma yoga anything we do must have tan man dhan within with love and compassion and by doing it we self purified we remove all of our shortcomings all of our limitations and turn into self transformation and experience so we remove our five plus two enemies calm crowd low mo ankar jealousy and resentments which is in chapter 2 6 verse 62 and 63 and then we get the wisdom because all the clouds have disappeared which blocking our wisdom our knowledge higher knowledge and then we realize who we are i am sat chit ananda you will hear me saying sat chit ananda many times this is like a mantra i am brahmasmi i am sat chit ananda and it could be done with any action not just hear the karma yogi swami chidanand ji the head of the path um, parmarth niketan and rishikesh the does not mean that we just have to do the uh, take the become the swami and then leave our home we can do it wherever we are we can do it in grahastha ashram wherever we are we can do it even in our kitchen making prasad or meditation but just become the karma yogi so l- last week we went through lord krishna told arjuna that our enemies paripanthino he calls it paripartino and what was that he said the rag dvesh was our enemy see in chapter 2 in 62 verse and 63 verse chapter 2 is basically a summary of the entire bhagavad gita we have beautifully explained that what are our limitations dhyay to vishan punsa sangaste shup jayate sanga sanjayate kama kama krodho bijayate krodha bhavti sammoha sammoha smriti vibhrama smriti bhranshat buddhi nasho buddhi nasha pranshati which means when we think about something dhyayato we develop the desire for it attachment we want it and if it is filled we want more and more and more because the desires are can never be filled it's just like a putting the oil on the fire the more we add it the more fire burns and then but if it is not fulfilled then what happens we get very upset and then 
when we are upset, then what happens? And this is where Lord Krishna is explaining in this particular verse. Because when he explained here, these two, he just mentioned two enemies last week, rag and dvesh, likes and dislikes, jealousy, attachments. And then Arjuna asked him that if we are the slave of our gunas, because he says everything is performed through our indriyas and indriyas are performed according to our gunas. Then Arjuna asked him, if everything is done by our gunas, then let it be. Why should I think differently? Because I'm Kshatriya. I'm passionate person. And passion leads to like a passion is likes and dislikes. I like this, I don't like this. We run from morning to evening, we just think about it. Certain people we don't like, certain situations we don't like, certain things we like, certain situations we like, certain friends we like. But if we think about it, there is no such thing where there are no challenges and there are no likes, likes or dislikes together. And he further explains. He says, you have, you are, of course, you have to perform according to your gunas. But you have a free will. And the free will is that you are not the slave of your gunas. You are to, uh, your ignorance, your nature, because you have a free will. And that based on the free will, you can perform. You must do the every action which your guna is making you to do it, which is karma. But then when you put the skills, your love and compassion for the sarva bhutite rata, benefit for all, that becomes your dharma. And you are not bound by your passion, by your gunas anymore. Now you are on the path to higher self, experiencing your true nature. So he mentions in the previous verses 35 and 34 and 35 that you are not the slave. Though you are attracted by your indriyas, you want to taste because your tongue makes you to do it. You want to hear certain music, certain gossips. You want to see things good, bad, etc. Et and judging. You like to smell the good things. Don't like the bad smell. You like to touch the flowers, not the thorns. However, he now leading him to the duality part. This likes and dislikes, this is all non-duality part. Here he's taking him to non-duality part. And he's telling him that whenever you have a desire, if it is not fulfilled, then you become angry, you get confused, your memory is gone. And desires are the path to disasters, the selfish desires, not all the desires. This is the ladder to fall. So in this verse, Kaam esha krodha esha rajo guna samud bhav. Here it's a samud bhav. Kaam and krodh, they are together. And they come with their passion, rajo guna. This is the nature of rajo guna, which we said that rajo guna means passionate, likes and dislikes. And what happens, which is explains right here. They are together. They are just like in the samudra, in the ocean. All the water, all the rivers are together. They merge together. Similarly, calm and krodh are in rajoguna. They are together in the passionate nature. And they are mahanasho, mahapapma, vidyanamid, verinam. They are shatru. 
they are enemies. So it is desire, lust, which is born out of passion. Rajoguna become anger due to unfulfilled desire. Desire is insatiable and a very harmful. So consider that as your enemy. That is your very numb. Before he says paripanthino, here he says very numb. So calm and crow, these are the worldly desires he is talking about. They lead to disasters. Anger leads to danger. Like look at this, if you put just the D to next to A, anger becomes danger. And the passion, rajoguna, mahanasho, mahapapo. Why it is mahanasho and mahapapo? It's a, filled with likes and dislikes. So what are desires? What is this karma we are talking about? The question comes, if we don't have any desires, if I don't have a desire to speak here, how would I speak? If you don't have a desire to come and attain here, how would you attain it? How would you join this session? Desires are there. We need to have a food. We need to have a clothes to wear, house to live, car to drive, family members. We, we, there are desires for the society. So without desires, how could we live? Here yeah, Lord Krishna says, we have no desires. Because desires lead to, if they're not fulfilled, then they lead to anger. But the body requires it. Mind requires it. Mind does not want to be in the turmoil all the time. Wants peace, serenity. Our soul has a need for peace for self-realization. So we have a desires, our whole life evolves around desires. How could we say no desires? But Lord Krishna further explains that there are three types of desires, tamasic and rajasic and sattvic. Tamasic desires, which we don't know whether we want it, we don't want it, why we want it. Those are the tamasic desires. And I said, buddhi nasha. Without buddhi, we are doing the things. Without in any wisdom. And then rajasic desires. I want more and more and more and more because I'm passionate nature, the rajasic nature drives us to the more and more, makes us greedy, greedy, greedy. One desire is fulfilled, the other one comes. And these are the barriers to self-realizing because they lead to disasters, a shanti in life. So selfish desires are the root cause of all the miseries in our life. I want more. I want this for myself. I want this for my family. I want this for my nation. And Lord Krishna says, no, desires should be more selfless because they cover the wisdom. They create the demonic behavior. Look at that. Many people in this world are saying my religion is better. So they go and they kill other people who do not believe in their religion or in their God. So they become demonic. Rakshas ban jate hain. Demonic behavior aa jata hai. Wo, their, their behavior makes them a rakshas. They don't understand the good and bad. They just want to kill, to convert people if they do not believe in their religion. So this is a rajasic, this is a, not a rajasic nature. This is a tamasic nature. And they create the misery for themselves and for the rest and create the hell around them. And that's where Lord Krishna differentiates. They have a desires but have a desires for the self-realization. Make your karma into dharma. Any activity you do, think about everybody with love and compassion. And then you will experience your eternal happiness, peace, anandam. So, as Sapte Sai Baba says, learn to put the ceiling on your desires. 
why Lord Krishna also says that yes, body requires the desires, but the desires should not be tamasic and rajasic. It should be for uplifting ourselves. But any desire or any work we do has some limitations, some issues, like he explains, like a fire. Fire is always has a smoke covered with the smoke. So we should not be afraid of smoke. We should still focus on our dharma rather than following other people's dharma. As here it shows, when we balance our wants and needs, like what we really need, then what we want, we, it's just like when we are in the swimming pool. And if we want to gobble all the water, we will drown. But if we just swim smoothly, then we can beautifully swim. So gobbling everything for us will take us to drowning. And here Vivekananji says that so long as there is a desire or want it, desire means want it, is a sure sign that there is an imperfection. A perfection-free being cannot have any desires. Means will whatever that person will desire, have it for goodness in his mind, for himself and others. So why it is Anger is maha papo, maha nashnam, maha shano, maha nashnam. Why maha papam? Because anger, what is anger? In dictionary, in West, Webster dictionary and many other places you see it, a strong feeling of a showing annoyed when we are really annoyed, when we are come, sometimes becoming hostile. But all the angers are not bad. Because anger is the way we can express ourselves to others. Sometimes it motivates us. Sometimes something doesn't get done and we motivate ourselves. I'm going to do this. I will get it done. Because there is a desire behind it. But here when it is a selfless desire, then it says those angers are those desires and those angers which come for that is not bad. But the chronic problem or the chronic anger is the problem which we choti choti baato mein gussa karte hai. Small, small things irritates us. Lose our serenity, become hostile, become violent. Here, this is a, this is a beautiful one which gives us outrageous wrath. There are many meanings of that. Aggression. And what happens when the, there is a chronic anger problem? It increases. Why it is Mahapapma, Mahanashnam? Because it increases our blood pressure. Other physiological changes associated with anger make it difficult to think straight and harm your physical and mental health. Our headache, we get the headache. We feel fatigue when we are angry. Our heart palpitation goes high. Our muscles sometimes are tightened around our chest and we lose our sleep. Our blood pressure is up. Our heart is pumping up. Why? Because the body, the, our adrenal gland sends the messages and vice versa. It goes to our brain. To here, our brain gives a signal to our adrenal glands. And then it releases a site of it uh, releases the hormones which are very harmful, the stress hormones they call it. So physiologically, we are in difficult situation. We develop all the diseases. And that's why it is called Mahanashnam. And also why it is called Mahapapman because it destroys, damages our relationships. We also with our anger, sometimes we are very ruthless to other people, which causes unhappiness in them. It gives a negative vibration, comes back and forth to us. And that's why it is called Mahapapman, because 
we have upset other people and of course upset our body. So when we develop the disease, this is a result of our anger. So that is a pop. Pop ka phal bhokte hai. But then it says there are different type of angers. Modern science says three type of anger. There are actually, if you look at it, there's a 12 type, 10 types. There are many, many different types, but in simple format, they call it as a passive anger where one is angry, but doesn't want to talk about it and burning inside like a coal and hurting himself. The open aggression, aggression, but too much. And then the third one is assertive anger. We express our anger, but very skillfully with good communication. And here it says, here it says four types of angers. So anger at self, sometimes we are so angry with ourselves. Why did I do it? Sometimes we are angry with other people. And then we are very disappointed. And then it is called the positive anger, where Gita describes in a three different types, tamasic anger, raisic anger, and sattvic anger. So what is a tamasic anger? I'm just upset, just upset on anybody, around anybody, me, without even knowing, in anger in ignorance, without knowing, understanding. Other nature is raisic nature, likes and dislikes. And most of the people are in that nature, get upset because I don't like this. So it upsets me. I don't like to go, go to this place, but I have to go and I don't enjoy there. That is rising upsetness, anger. And I'm just kind of expressing it through my face, through my body language, etc. And sometimes openly. And there is a sattvic anger, which is called the positive anger. And good example is when we, children do something which is not good for them. We discipline them. We have to raise our voice. And in India, here in United States, it's not allowed. But in India, so we raised our hands. We slapped them. But it is for their benefit. And Guruji has explained in a very beautifully, he says, God is like our parents. When a child does not do something properly, the dis parents discipline them. And how they discipline them? They, sit down, they very gently tell them, don't do this. But they don't, they still continue to do it. Then they get they raise their voice and still they are very destructive. They kick them out of the house and say, get out of my house. Though they are not kicking them out of their heart, but to discipline them. Giving this is their way of giving them the message. Similarly, God does the same thing to us. When we are not listening to his guidance, he gives us a little, little difficulties in life. Then he, we still continue to ignore his messages. Then he gives us a bigger challenges. And if we still ignore it, then we get into real difficult situations. Like if my health is not good and if I'm ignoring it, I have some infection and I'm not taking care of it, not going to the doctor. The infection is taking all over my body. And if I still don't pay attention, and it happens to many people, they, due to their infections and bacteria in the body and viruses and all that, they go into coma. We all have experienced the same people with the COVID. So this is what happens. Why This is why anger is called Mahanasho Mahapapnam. And here is a beautiful story. What does anger do? A one small child, a boy, who was very, has a nature of anger. And his grandfather tried to teach him. Then the boy kind of started listening to him. 
but he didn't know how to get out of it, how to transform himself. So grandfather taught him a very good way. And he says, here is the nail. Every time you get angry, put one nail in this wood or in this fence. So he started doing it. So he nailed 37 nails into the fence. And then he told him, now every time you stop your anger, take one nail out of it. So he pulled those nails out of the fence and eventually he succeeded. First day he did it like 30 to 15, then 10, and then kept going on and then five. And finally he came to the zero. So he was so happy running to the, his grandpa and say, look at Dadaji, I pull all the nails out. Now I'm fully transformed. And then his grandfather tells him, go and look at the fence. What happened to the fence? And those 30 nails, spots were, holes were there. So message is here. Even though we, when we get angry, angry with others or ourselves, we are nailing ourselves or the others. But when we try to transform and we take those nails out, damage is still there. The heart is still there. Relationships are damages because of that, even though we try to mend it, but there it is a long way to go for it. So extinguishing the fire of anger from very beginning, understand the desires, likes and dislikes, which lead to, so our goal is to let go, let go our too many desires and how we do it. This is a beautiful poem. I want to read it so then we can go to the next one. So, oh, my desire, you led me to suffer. You drove me off the track. I am too weak to control you because you controlled me. Dislikes, you controlled me. Likes, you controlled me. You took away my sleep at night. You left me with pains in my chest. You drove me to ICU and I could not breathe anymore. You made me lose my temper and draw my dear ones away from me. You made me lie, steal and stab others on their back. I thought you were my friend and I let you stay with me. I gave you my time, my sleep, my health. The more I nurture you, the more you took over my life. Now I have lost relationship. I have lost my sleep and finally I lost my health. I have few more days to live and pray to God. Please do not allow these selfish desires to take over of anyone, including my enemies, because no one is my bigger enemy than my own selfish desires. They are my biggest enemies. Oh my Lord, please give me only desire to attain you. May God bless you with desire to attain God and self-realization. So homework here is ask yourself, Again, Swadhyaya Bhaskam, self-inquiry, because we have to be aware of it. Triple A theory, awareness. We have to be aware of our enemies, our own shortcomings. Doing the inquiry, where these are coming. So these are the questions for self-inquiry. What are my likes and dislikes? Make a list of it. What are my desires, selfish desires? Make a list of it. Is this my need or want? Attachments, what makes me angry? Pay, pay attention to it. And am I fearful, stressful? Do I surrender and let go? So I always share this book, which is my favorite book. Make a list. If you take a notebook at home, just make a list of it. 
and be aware of your limitations, accept them and do your best until we accept them, we are aware of them, we accept them and then transform yourself. So then karma yoga, anger becomes anger, with the karma yoga, one becomes anger free, stress free and become healthy, happy and peaceful and realize who I am. Because if we do not realize, then in Gita further it says, hell has three ga gates. Kaam, Krodh, Lob, Narka ke Dwar hai. So in chapter 1621, this is a very popular verse for guiding us who are our enemies. They take us to hell. So egoistic, selfish desires, anger and greed are the triple barriers to achieve our eternal prosperity, abundance, love, peace, ananda. So here comes the practicality part of it. 30 days planner where here comes the self-purification, self-transformation and self-discipline practices, practices, practice, 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 practice. Gita is all about practice, practice, practice. So we talk about it for one hour here, but then the whole week is practice what we discuss here. And then we become gradually, little by little, shanai, shanai, upparme, buddhya, grati, grahita. Atma sansam man mana kratva na kinchit apichinte. Then by gradually, little by little, we become, we minimize our enemies. So first thing in the morning when you get up is Om Mantra or whatever, or read Bhagavad Gita, whatever suits you. Just take a one word or one phrase, whatever or some autography, biography, doesn't matter. One message. But to me, whatever I need to work on it, if it is a dveshta, whatever dveshta, whatever is, I just take that per day. And that I take that message for the whole day or maybe for a whole week to practice. And of course, we do the, I call 60-minute program. So 20-minute yoga, 20-minute pranayama and meditation. And then during the day, practice that particular statement. And in the evening, evaluate. How did I do it? Maybe it was the 30 nails. Maybe today are 29 nails. 28, 27, 20. So these 30 nails eventually will become one nail and the zero nail. And continue to practice, practice. But we do not pound if we kind of failed certain days or we kind of we wanted. Because here we are trying to get out of likes and dislikes. Johua Sarva Dharma Paritajya Mamekam Sharanam Braj Aham Tvam Sarpape Bhyo Moksha Shami Mashuche. Because we are not alone. Now God is helping us. As it says, when we put some desire, this is a good desire, whole cosmos comes, whole universe comes to help us out. And then eventually just surrender, surrender, surrender. That's where the message is. And then go to bed with calm mind. So our sankalpa is be aware. So sankalpa is I am beware of my eternal enemies. Which enemy is overtaking of my happiness, my smile, and I have to work on it. In other words, adat buri sudhar lo ho gaya bhajan. Kaun si adat mujhe apni sudhar ni hai? Which habits I have to remove, convert into, transform myself. Which desire I have to eliminate. And then, as I said, mentioned before here, this is very, very important homework. Please do it so you will experience it. So in other words, we should police our desires, our anger. And by doing that, Little by little, we will get control over our enemies and experience more and more happy, healthy, and peaceful life and ultimately experience our true nature. I am Brahmasmi. I am Satchit Ananda. So thank you very much for attending the session of Freedom from Pains and Miseries to Happy, Healthy, and 
peaceful life. Thank you.